The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. A tour, a cruise, the mountains or the shore, wherever you are this summer, if you are one of the 12 million policyholders and beneficiaries who own or will benefit by Equitable Society life insurance policies, we like to think that your vacation is especially pleasant. Your Equitable Society policy safeguards you against uncertainty and insecurity. Yes, to enjoy a completely carefree vacation, make sure you have all the life insurance protection you need. See your Equitable Society representative soon. Tonight's FBI file, The Uninvited Partner. Our civilization is the most advanced in the long history of the world. We who are alive today enjoy advantages of living undreamed of generations ago. And yet, with all of our refinements, if you can pay for it, you can still rent a human being to commit murder. These professional killers have no single base of operations. And they murder not because they hate but because it's their business. They care not why they kill, nor in most cases whom they kill, just so long as they remain employed. Tonight's FBI file opens in an apartment hotel located in one of the better residential districts of a large western city. A young lady who lives in one of the suites in this building is just entering her front door. Gwen? Yes, Walter? Did you go to the lawyers? Well, of course, I told you I would. What's the story? They want to have the marriage annulled. For how much? Ten thousand. Not enough. Walter, that isn't bad. Honey, what do you think you're playing, Jax? Well, it's better when than... the Conway family is very rich. If they want to have your marriage to their pride and joy annulled, they've got to up that figure plenty. Walter, don't forget, we did frame the guy into marrying me. That's not true. Oh, stop. We got him so drunk he'd have married you if you asked him. Very funny. Well, what do I tell the lawyer? About the money? Yes. Tell him it's not acceptable. He said that was their final offer. Forget what he said. I've got other ideas. Oh. Where is your husband now? On a hunting trip. Where? At his camp. Have you ever been there? Yeah. Why? Do you know the way up there well enough to direct somebody to the place? Oh, sure. Look, what is this? We're not going to take the 10000 Hmm? And we're not going to have your marriage to Mr. Conway annulled. We're not? No. I know how you can get all of Mr. Conway's money. How? Oh. It's very simple. Instead of being his wife, you become his widow. Answer the door, will you, Gwen? Okay. Just a minute. Hello. Hello. Is Walter Hughes here? Oh, are you Russ Moody? That's right. Come in, please. Hello there, Russ. Hello, Walter. Uh, this is Miss Blair, Mr. Moody. How do you do? Hello. Well, it certainly has been a long time, huh? Yeah. You haven't changed a bit, Russ. You look fine, fine. Walter, uh, let's get down to business. Oh, oh, sure, sure. I've got a job for you. I can use one. The horse has been running bad? 
They've been running fine, but too slow. Uh, can I make you fellas a scotch? A swell, a scotch and soda for me, honey. Yeah, I'll have the same. Okay. What's your deal, Walter? I've got a client. I can't tell you his name. He wants to have a certain party disposed of. For how much? One thousand in cash. Where did you come up with that kind of a client? Russ, I don't ask you anything about your business, do I? Sorry. Where is this guy? He's up in a hunting lodge about 30 miles from here. Miss Blair's drawn a map for you with all the directions. Okay. When do you want the job done? As soon as possible. Tomorrow? Fine. Oh, one thing. Yeah? It should appear to be an accident. A hunting accident. It will. Swell. Now, uh, here's the guy's picture, Russ. Uh, don't make any mistakes. I never have. Here's your drinks, boys. Oh, thank you, dear. Mr. Moody? Thanks. I have a toast. To what? To Russ. And a successful mission. <laughs> The following evening at the local FBI field office, a sergeant of the state police is just introducing himself to Special Agent Jim Taylor. Uh, Mr. Taylor, I'm Sergeant Hall. Oh, hello there, Sergeant. How do you do? Uh, your agent in charge sent me in to see you. Good. Sit down, won't you? Thanks. Well, Sergeant, what's on your mind? Well, my regular patrol includes a pretty remote section of mountain country about 30 miles north of here. Mm -hmm. There was a hunter found dead up there this morning. He'd been shot through the head. Oh, I see. Did you identify him? Yeah. Name's Conway. Hmm. Ralph Conway. He comes from a well-to-do family here in town. Sergeant, was this a hunting accident? I don't think so. Oh, why not? Well, there were several factors in the case that make me seem to think he was murdered. Well, let's hear them. Well, first of all, examination showed that Conway was killed with a forty-five caliber bullet. Uh -huh. I've never heard of anyone going hunting with a forty-five. <laughs> not unless they're hunting people. Right. What other factors have you? Well, we found a car abandoned not too far from the scene of the crime. It had Oregon plates on it. Our office wired to see if it had been stolen. Mm, I see. Sergeant, you find any trace of the weapon? No. How about footprints? It's pretty dry country this time of year. Well, Sergeant, what would you like the FBI to do? I'd like some help on these. That's a shell I found near the body. Mm. And that's the bullet the coroner removed from Conway. I see. Well, I'll have them sent on to our laboratory in Washington and get a check against the National Unidentified Ammunition File. What's that? Well, that's a file of guns and ammunition found at the scenes of unsolved crimes. Now, they'll check the markings on this bullet with other forty-five slugs they have on file and see if the same gun was ever used in any other crime. Well, how long do you think it'll be before you get a report? Well, I'm afraid that depends on how busy they are, Sergeant. However, I'll be in touch with you as soon as I hear from them. <laughs> Uh, yes, Gwen? Any word from Russ? No. Gee, you, you, you'd think he'd call or something. He doesn't have to. Why not? He did his job very successfully, too. How do you know? I'm just reading the morning papers. They've all carried an account of a very tragic hunting accident. To Conway? Of course. Well, was he killed? Naturally. That's wonderful. You should read these papers when you get a chance. They gave the story quite a play. One of them even has an editorial warning all of its readers to be more careful when they go hunting. <laughs> no kidding. Hey, maybe we did some good with this. Darling, that was the whole idea, to help the community. <laughs> well, what happens now? I think you should go to see Conway's lawyer. Okay. On your way, stop off at the bank. What for? Draw out $900. I want to give it to Russ. Well, you promised him a 1000 I'm holding out 10% for my commission. How can you charge a commission? You remember I was very careful to tell him the job was for a client of mine. Oh, look. How cheap can you get? Oh, darling, this is merely good business. Okay. What do I say to the lawyer? Just tell him you'd like him to make all the necessary arrangements for you to collect your husband's estate. I wonder how much it'll be. I'd say at least a quarter of a million. No kidding. Gee, being a widow is wonderful. Uh, 
Uh, busy, Mr. Taylor? Oh, no, no. Come on in, Sergeant. I just got your message a little while ago. Have you heard from Washington? Yes, I received a report on that bullet. Wait, it's in this file here. Um... Oh, here it is. A bullet used to kill Ralph Conway matched two others in the unidentified ammunition file. Two others? That's right. In uh, October of 1946, there was a petty racketeer killed back east with the same gun. And in June of this year, the same gun was used to murder a bookmaker. Almost sounds like the owner is a professional. Yes. There's one thing that puzzles me, though. What's that? Well, the other two known murders that were committed with this gun were killings that involved other criminals. Yes. Now, you told me that Ralph Conway was from a well-to-do family. How does he fit in? I don't know. We checked on him, but he was never in anything that wasn't legitimate. But if we're correct in assuming that he was killed by a hired gunman, he had to be mixed up in something. That's true. Well, Sergeant, I think the first thing to do is go and talk to Conway's family. See if he had any enemies. Uh, would you mind doing that? Oh, oh, not at all, Sergeant. I'll get over there right now. <laughs> Good to be back here. Oh, hello, honey. Sure hot downtown. Was it hot in the lawyer's office? No, his place is air-conditioned. That's not what I meant. Hmm? I mean, how did you make out with him? Oh. Well, I don't think he likes me very much. Really? Why not? I was so charming. Nothing happened. You mean he didn't go for the widow routine? Oh, yeah. He admitted I was a legitimate widow. That's all I wanted to hear. Uh, did you ask about the estate? Mm-hmm. How much? Over $300,000. Such sweet music. Oh, that must be Russ. Let him in. Okay. Hello. Hello, Mr. Moody. Come on in. Thanks. Hello there, Russ. Hello, Walter. Allow me to congratulate you. That was a fine job you did. Thank you. Well, I suppose you've come here about your fee. That's right. Gwen. Yeah? Did you bring back that cash? Yeah, I have it right here. Miss Blair cashed my client's check. As you know, he requested secrecy. I know. Here's the money, Walter. Thanks. Here you are, Russ. Your thousand, less 10% commission for me, making 900 net. Okay. Well, I guess that closes the books, hmm? Uh, not quite. What do you mean? Let's uh, review a few of the facts. Well... When you first talked to me about the job, I thought I was going to knock off some stale nobody. So? And I pick up the papers and find I work on a guy named Ralph Conway who's worth a bundle. What's your point, Russ? I'm getting to that. I also find out that Miss Blair here is Mrs. Ralph Conway. Who told you that? It's in the afternoon papers. Mm. Russ, what difference does that make to you? I can figure as good as you can. She comes into a chunk of dough now as his widow. That's right. And you're going to get a piece of that dough for seeing to it that she became a widow. I still don't see why it matters to you. All I did the dirty work on this job. And according to the papers, you two figured to split up about 300,000. Um, where's the whiskey? Why? Well, you two were nice enough to drink a toast to my success when I left for the mountains. Let's drink another toast now. To our new partnership. We will return in just a moment to tonight's file from your FBI. Ed, I've just been talking to a professional worry lifter. You've been talking to a professional what? A professional worry lifter. And believe me, I can't think of anyone I'd rather have around in time of trouble. He's not the ordinary garden variety of worry lifter, the kind that's long on advice and short on action. He's a professional who really knows how to go to work and crack down on worries. I sure could use one right now. But where do you find him? Oh, that's easy. He's your equitable society representative. And believe me, when you're taking a beating from old man worry, when fears about your family's future are keeping you awake half the night, your equitable society's man is just what the doctor ordered. Ask him for a full and complete job of worry lifting, including readjustment income. Say that again, will you? Readjustment income. The Equitable Society's readjustment income plan provides extra income for the widow during the two toughest years. The two years immediately following her husband's death. Years in which she is adjusting the family way of life to a lowered income. You know, expenses can't be reduced overnight. It takes time. 
And that's why every life insurance program should provide readjustment income for extra help during the two toughest years. Sounds swell, Mr. Keating. But are there any strings attached to it? Does this readjustment income cost a lot of money? Why, it may not cost you a cent. It may require only a simple rearranging of your present life insurance program. In any event, the man to see is your professional worry lifter, your Equitable Society representative. Look in the phone book for the Equitable Life Assurance Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to our FBI file, The Uninvited Partner. one characteristic of criminals which marks them as being different from the rest of their fellow citizens. And that is that their lives are motivated entirely by greed. The success of one plan, in this case the marriage of the nightclub singer to the young playboy, does not satisfy the criminal. His insatiable greed always drives him on to the next crime even if that next crime, as in tonight's case from the files of your FBI, is murder. Tonight's file continues in the FBI field office. Sergeant Hall of the state police is just approaching Special Agent Jim Taylor's desk. Hello, Sergeant. Hello, Jim. Did you contact Conway's family? I talked to his lawyer. Said he didn't know any enemies Conway might have had who'd want him murdered. I see. He did tell me something that might help us, though. Oh? What was that? Well, he discussed young Conway's secret marriage. Yes? It seems that the marriage was the result of a frame-up for her, so the lawyer said. Well, why didn't they have it annulled? Well, the Conway family hates publicity, and they were in the process of dickering with a girl to get her to agree to an annulment. And what was her reaction to that? Well, according to the lawyer, she seemed about to accept their offer of $10,000 when the murder occurred. Oh, I see. She gets the whole estate now, I guess. That's it. And she's already been to see him about it, too. I wouldn't say she was exactly in deep mourning, then. No. Well, who is she? Or who was she before she married Conway? A nightclub singer. She met Conway in one of the places she was working. Uh According to his lawyer, she got him quite drunk one night, drove him to a justice of the peace outside the city, and then married him. Did you find out where we can locate her? Yes. Yes, she lives in an apartment hotel. I checked over there before I came back to the office, and she'd left word at the desk that she wouldn't be back for about an hour. Uh, Can I use your phone? Sure, Sergeant. I want to make a report on this to my office. Okay. I think I'll go over and talk to the widow. We'll meet back here. Gwen, any word from the lawyer? No. But while you were out, I had a visitor. Russ? No. This was a man named Taylor from the FBI. What did he want? Oh, he asked a million questions about Ralph. When we got married, how, who was there. What else? Wanted to know if I'd ever heard Ralph talk about any of his enemies. His enemies? Why did he ask you that? He said that they knew that Ralph was murdered, and that it wasn't a hunting accident. That's not so good. What do you think went wrong? How do I know? I'm not working with the police. Well, I just thought you might have an idea. Don't make me such a big man. You were a full partner when things were going good. Have you heard from Russ? No, not a word. He said he'd get in touch with us when his money ran out. Must have had a couple of winners at the track. I hope he stays lucky. Maybe he won't bother us then. That's wishful thinking, honey. He'll be back here whether he goes broke or not. Walter. Hmm? Suppose he gets picked up by the cops for the killing. He might decide to talk. I know. That'd make everything just dandy. Wait. What? I just thought of something that might cover everything. What? Have you got any stationery in your desk? Yeah. I want you to write a letter. To who? To the FBI. Now get some stationery and write what I tell you. Oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Sarge, but I was in talking to the agent in charge about this case. Well, that's all right, Jim. Did you get to see Miss Conway? Mm -hmm, I did. Get anything from her? Well, that's what I was in talking to the agent in charge about. About what she told you? No, she didn't tell me a thing I didn't know before I went to see her. I don't understand, Jim. Well, after I interviewed her, I came back here to the office. Uh Uh-huh. 
About an hour later, I got a note from her. What does it say? Well, when I was talking to her, I asked her whether or not she knew of any enemy Conway might have had who would go so far as to kill him. And she said no. That's correct. Now, in this note here, she says that she used to go with a hoodlum named Russ Moody before she married Ralph Conway. And she thinks that Moody may have killed Conway? That's it. She says that Moody was insanely jealous of anyone she even spoke to, and that in some way he found out about her secret marriage to Conway. Who is Moody? Oh, we checked up on him. He's got a bad record. Fortunately for us, he's wanted by the FBI now for unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. Are you going to pick him up? Yes, I'm having a warrant drawn up now for his arrest. Another one so that we can search his apartment, too. Mrs. Conway included his address in her note. Well, when do you want to go over there? Well, what time is it now, sir? Uh, 3.15. Well, those warrants ought to be ready by now. Let's pick them up and get going. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Conway. This is one of your partners. What do you want, Mr. Moody? Well, it's a long story. I went up to a horse room a little while ago, and I bet on three horses that were sure things. What's that got to do with me? They lost. That's too bad. Oh, it's worse than that. I lost a thousand more than I got. You shouldn't gamble. Look, I didn't call you for any lessons. Well, what did you call for? I want another thousand today. I got to pay that bookmaker. Well, can't he wait? That's not his business. He plays for cash. I don't care how you do it, but dig me up a thousand by six o'clock. Where am I going to get a thousand dollars? Call Conway's lawyer. He'll go. I can't call him. Look, I just told you, I don't care where you get it. Are you calling me from your apartment? No, I'm in the horse room. You going home from there? No. I'm going to stay here until after the last race. Then I'm coming over to your place. I'll be there at six o'clock. Be sure you're home. And be sure you have that dough. Is that you, Jim? No. Yeah, I've got the keys. I showed the superintendent the search warrant and he handed them right over. Well, let's go in. All right. Yeah, it doesn't. Go ahead, Sergeant. Thanks. Well, we've got one break anyway. We've only got one room to search. Yes. Now, let's take a look in that dresser, huh? Okay. Oh, let's see. Shirts. Socks. Wait a minute. This might be what we're looking for. What is it? Look. It's a forty-five. The same caliber gun that was used on Conway. I know. Sorry, let's take a look at that firing pin. Oh, off-center, eh? Mm-hmm. You remember the peculiar markings on the shell you found near Conway's body? Mm-hmm. This could very easily be the gun that was used. Well, we'll send it along to the laboratory and let them check. They can tell us for sure. Well, let's look into the drawer. Give me the gun, Jim. I'll wrap it up. Okay, here you go. Anything in there? Mm, no. Well, let's see what's in there. Mr. Moody doesn't have many possessions. No. Hey, wait a minute. What? Something under these handkerchiefs, eh? Oh. Okay, Sarge. What is it? A hand-drawn map. Does it look familiar to you? Yes. That's the territory where Conway was shot. Mm-hmm. This ties Moody into it, all right. I think it does more than that, Sergeant. Let's get back to the office. Walter, where have you been? What's the matter, Frank? I got a phone call from our partner. Russ? Who else? Where was he? In a horse room. Did he say if he was going home? No, he's coming over here. Then your note to the FBI won't work. Yeah, I know. Did he say why he was coming here? Now, I'll give you just one guess. Money? Naturally. When did he say he'd be here? Six o'clock. Six now? Yeah. I called the FBI a few minutes ago. Told him Russ would be here. When did Russ call? Two hours ago. Why didn't you call the FBI then? Oh, I was too upset. I didn't think. Walter, if he gets here before the FBI does, what do we do? I'll handle that. Do you think we should... Answer it. Okay. Hello? Come in, Russ. Thanks. Well, all partners present, eh? That's right. I won't waste much of your time. Did you dig me that money? It's not here yet. Did you call the lawyer? Uh, Yes, she did. He's sending it over. Okay. 
Oh, well, that must be the messenger now. Let him in, Gwen. Yeah, yeah, sure. Hello, Mr. Conway. Oh, come in. Thank you. I received your message. That man there is Russ Moody. What is this? Stay where you are, Moody. I have a gun. Who are you? I'm a special agent of the FBI. I've got a warrant here for your arrest for the murder of Ralph Conway. Oh, I'm sure glad you got here before he made any trouble. I'm grateful to you, too, Mrs. Conway. If it hadn't been for you, we might never have known about Moody. Why? We also might never have found the map you drew for Moody to get to your husband's hunting lodge. What? I found that in his room. The handwriting matched the note you sent me at the office. Walter. There must be some mistake. I'll give all of you a chance to correct it. I'm taking you in now for questioning. <laughs> Russ Moody was convicted in a state court for murder and sentenced to be executed. Walter Hughes was convicted as an accomplice to murder and sentenced to be executed. Gwen Blair, his female companion, was also convicted as an accomplice to murder and given life imprisonment. And thus, three more criminals saw their careers ended because of thorough investigative work by a special agent of your FBI. And the important thing about the arrests was that it removed from circulation a professional killer, a man who made his living by murder. His conviction also closed the files on a number of unsolved murders, thanks to the unidentified ammunition file, a little-known but very important section of the laboratory of your FBI. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Say, Mr. Keating, just one last question about the Equitable Society Readjustment Income Plan you were telling us about. You said extra cash for the first two years after the husband's death. Does it have to be exactly two years, no more, no less? No, Ed, this equitable plan is completely elastic. Its purpose is to give your wife extra cash for as long a period as you think she'll need to adjust her expenses to a new standard of living. I see. Why not get the whole story from your Equitable Society representative? Let him show you how little it costs to provide your wife with equitable readjustment income. Call your Equitable representative soon. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Big Build-Up. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry Lewis... Your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The big build-up on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.